Hello, welcome to the Erasmus Plus Chase Project Module 2, Regulation, Legal Aspects and Governance of Blockchain Systems. Lecture 1, devoted to blockchain basics to set the regulation and governance context and requirements, has been prepared by Frédéric Viennier, Liris Lab at INSA Lyon, France. In this first lecture, we identify the key characteristics of the blockchain systems to identify the potential usages and the blockchain ecosystem characteristics to identify key governance rules used to manage interactions in the blockchain ecosystem and regulation requirements to regulate interactions of the blockchain ecosystem with its environment. Few skills, competences and knowledge have been defined for by the Chase project. By following this lecture, for one from module two, you will be able to get few skills such as recognize legal and regulatory issues and risks when dealing with cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. You can explain implications of blockchain technology for governments, policymakers, law professionals, regulators and society. You can practice critical thinking of the blockchain legal environment and the regulation and participate in discussion regarding blockchain technology impact and blockchain governance decision. All these skills are based on basic knowledge on blockchain governance and regulation. You will know about blockchain related legal environment, some legal underpins of blockchain technology and smart contract, blockchain and public policy, governmental regulations, and implications of blockchain technology for society, regulators, policymakers, government, law professionals. Attending this video will provide you all this necessary knowledge. Identifying blockchain governance and regulation requirements is not so obvious because if we pay attention to some bibliometric analysis, we can see that blockchain is considered as a, blo as a technologic object regarding the cryptography, the digital storage, the peer-to-peer -peer network, or as an application support for electronic money for the Internet of Things. It is also well known thanks to the first implementation, the Bitcoin. There are few things regarding the data security, privacy, but this is not the most important thing. How can we define it? Pick a paper, a pen, try to identify your requirements. To this end, we are going to identify some key questions. Let's try defining the blockchain governance and regulation go requirements. What do you think about this challenge? According to you, is there a unique generic blockchain system model that can be used to capture governance and regulation requirements? Or should you define different models? As governance rules are set to manage internal interactions of actors involved in an ecosystem, can we define some key characteristics from which governance requirements can be derived. Defining the way the blockchain system interacts with its environment involves also paying attention to its actors, their motivation and the interaction they have with their environment to identify which regulation context must be applied. Should you define a spatial context for blockchain or is it similar to other application? Lastly, should the different blockchain usages involve a regulation? Let's think and brainstorm regarding these questions. You can start thinking of other systems you know, on how regulation is set, which kind of ecosystem do you know? Have you already heard of any regulation devoted to some technological challenges? Let's think. What can be the usages? Are some usages mostly sensitive? Are other usages similar to other applications and processes? What is really a blockchain? Is it only a technical object? Is it a system? with different applications, with different actors? 
Now, identify your own questions. You can identify keywords, just write them, and then support discussion with other people, or keep them in mind, and then we will discuss about it during this lecture. Brainstorming is not so obvious. You can organize now your key ideas based on main axes for regarding the blockchain, which you can consider as a technology, a technological support for applications or socio-economic system. You may also pay attention to governance and regulation. Just question if it's really different. Uh, what about system theory? So you can go more in depth uh, to set your own knowledge about it. For each idea you got, Pick a post-it, write your idea on it, then put it on the sheet of paper and draw relationship between your post-its. You will have, by this way, your first cognitive map or mind map about these key ideas. And at the end of this lecture, just try to adjust this post-it-based organization for your mind map and check if it will answer your key questions. To answer the key question, that is defining blockchain governance and regulation requirements, in this lecture, we will propose you to identify key characteristics of blockchain systems to identify the way internal governance rules are set. Then we will pay attention to the blockchain ecosystem organization, to the different application fields to capture regulation requirements. So, what are the learning objectives of this lecture? To sum up, this lecture addresses three different learning objectives regarding blockchain characteristics, introducing a blockchain typology and paying attention to the different key concepts of the blockchain. We can also consider the blockchain as a distributed model, a distributed organization where people interact with them, and this will allow identifying which internal governance rules are necessary. We will also pay a particular attention to the token status and identify how this status may impact the governance. Then we will also pay attention to regulation and governance requirements with a particular attention to the blockchain ecosystem and to the way this ecosystem interacts with this environment. So, following these learning objectives, this lecture is organized into three parts related to the blockchain system definition, to the blockchain distributed organization, and to governance and regulation requirements. In these three parts, we will pay attention to basic knowledge and also identify the key concepts and key requirements. So now let's start with the blockchain key concepts, defining this distributed ledger organization and the way a blockchain typology can be set. This will favor the analyze of the requirements and how we can set them. So let's come back to basis. Basically, a blockchain is a digital and distributed transaction ledger. Transactions are peer-to-peer -peer transactions. They are stored in blocks and blocks are chained. We can know that this mechanism is independent of the content associated to the transaction, which can be associated to a payment, to an automated process, to a granted access, a certified information, and so on. So blockchain means a chain of blocks. Each blocks storing transaction. But a blockchain is not a simple technological object storing transaction, a simple digital ledger. 
as a distributed system, there are no trusted tier in charge of authenticating the transaction. Trust relies on the way the distributed ledger is built and ensures safe and immutable storage of the transactions, as well as transaction non-repudiation. Transaction non-repudiation means that any peer involved in the transaction cannot say that the transaction hasn't occurred. These two characteristics must be considered while setting governance and regulation. How can these requirements be implemented in a distributed organization? First works achieved in 1991 by Stuart Arbor and Scott Stonerta from Bell Labs have introduced cryptographic hashing techniques to set a document digital signature, including both the documents and the timestamp, which allows storing immutable records. Any changes in the document will, can, will drive to a wrong signature when we can recompute the signature. The distributed ledger is organized thanks to Merkle trees, which were introduced in 1979 to store the hashed information. Each leaf of this Merkle tree store a hashed document. Then blocks are merged and a new hash based on these two signatures is computed and inserted in the tree higher level and so on. Merkle trees are binary trees, so extra empty nodes can be added to ensure a binary tree is always produced. This binary tree organization allows achieving local checks on a subtree, so it can be checked even if nobody has the full tree structure. Local control on a block involves getting hash from its browsers so the father hash can be computed. Then this father hash is combined with its anchor hash value and the next layer can be checked. This former works provides a cryptographic background to support blockchain. A block contains both transaction data and hash as a previous block. Integrating cryptographic blocks can be used to prove data integrity, provided that the tree has not been attacked. Focusing on transaction non-repudiation, such a feature is traditionally proven by logging all processing actions in different ledgers, one managed by each party involved in the transaction, so that each partner can show how the distributed process is run on its side. Organizing a distributed ledger storing, storing the same Merkle tree on several hosts increases availability and robustness. But this leads to a new challenge. How to protect the ledger from changes and how to ensure trust between the different systems hosting a copy of the ledger, who, is, uh, who got the right one, in fact. This means that the blockchain has its own governance rules accepted by all participants to so, so that the decision process can be decentralized and it does not require a certification authority. It will be a distributed certification. Different protocols govern blockchain transaction validation, such as proof of work, proof of stakes. Why? In fact, distributed means that the safer synchronized copy of the ledgers are available. This increases the global security level as hacking a blockchain involves hacking at the same time the different instances of the ledger. So if anybody attack the blockchain integrity on a node, then this attack can be fine just because the node content is not similar to the other. At this point, we can see that the block validation rule must be defined to govern the blockchain organization. So, after saying that blockchain store transaction, which kind of transactions are stored? Blockchain provides a new service to store peer-to-peer -peer transactions, solving the double spending problem as a single chain of blocks approved by both parties. In traditional transactions, party, identity, and transactions are certified on two authorities managing a secured deposit. Authorities are well known and warranty the true identity, sometimes thanks to a deposit of physical proofs, for example, your passport or your identity card. Consequently, traditional transactions have a price to pay the service provided by one of these authorities. The blockchain is a distributed organization. Each member of the community invests computational resources, currencies, to validate a transaction. 
When a blockchain is used to store a transaction, trust is associated to the block validation protocol. This leads to set to distribute a trust management protocol, relying on consensus management between the nodes hosting the copy of the ledger. Similar to other services, registering a transaction in a blockchain has a cost and fees must be paid. Consequently, instead of paying transaction fees to traditional authorities, these fees can be negotiated with transaction validators. Depending on the cho chosen validation fees, different transaction priorities can be set to favor a faster or slower validation process. Transaction fees are paid with token managed by the blockchain itself. This provides a state-independent currency management, but validators need to sell these cryptocurrencies to pay for real-world resources they use to achieve the validation job. For example, paying for computers, paying for data centers, and so on. As a cryptocurrency is set, regulation rules are necessary as money creation is a regal privilege. Let's now try to characterize a blockchain system to identify a blockchain typology. As a first criteria, we can set a blockchain access control to characterize a blockchain system. This leads to split blockchain systems into permissionless and permission blockchains. To provide open and publicly shared ledgers, no access control is required. As a consequence, such public blockchains are called permissionless. These permissionless blockchains are fully open to both users and validators who only need to follow the block validation protocol and provide the requested resources to mine blocks. In such public systems, participants are identified thanks to an avatar, a kind of pseudonymous which provide them the ability to sign for a transaction without providing their real identity to the blockchain system. On the opposite, a private blockchain system is designed for well-known participants, it is participants with an authenticated and authorized identity. This leads to implement access control to grant access permissions to the blockchain. Such systems are called permission blockchains. In such systems, validators are restricted to authorized ones, so trust management is a simpler and a large is simpler and a large variety of consensus protocols can be used. Such permission blockchains can also be set for well identified consortium leading to consortium blockchain. In such case, users and validators require access permission to use the blockchain. Hybrid blockchain systems are permission systems protecting the transaction confidentiality, but transactions can be verifiable by non-members of the blockchain intrinsic community. Characterizing a blockchain may also think about the technology typology. Since the introduction of the first Bitcoin blockchain system, Blockchain technology has evolved, allowing us to define the second blockchain system classification criteria, the blockchain technology. Based on this criteria, we can identify a four-element typology. First, the blockchain 1.0. This is the oldest blockchain technology. It provides a permissionless public blockchain system supporting cryptocurrency based on transactions. Blockchain developers and block validation are paid thanks to tokens used as fiat currencies. Nevertheless, these cryptocurrencies introduced to support a peer-to-peer -peer currency transfer without any intermediary are disconnected from any valuable good exchange. There is no real link with any actions in the real economy nor any unified international market. Moreover, these cryptocurrencies are isolated from each other. The pricing expressed in traditional currencies are highly volatile due to speculation from core developers and miners who optimize the revenue they get from operating the blockchain and transaction validation service. Users are associated to an avatar and a cryptographic key without having to prove their real identity. This leads to consider such cryptocurrencies are loaned currencies for the dark economy. This is, for example, the case of the Bitcoin. Similarly to Blockchain 1.0, Blockchain 2.0 developers and transaction validators are paid thanks to token. Nevertheless, Blockchain 2.0 are not designed as crypto assets. They introduce a new mechanism to support value-added usage development for the blockchain, the smart contract. 
Blockchain 2.0 technology can support both permission and permissionless blockchains. A smart contract is a computerized transaction protocol with a fully automatized execution. The code is stored in the blockchain as a transaction content and is executed according to activation conditions. The smart contract execution is associated to asset transfer, providing a link between a token and a valuable service. As in the real contracts, contract terms represent a valuable good service that must be executed to support the token transfer. All nodes involved in the blockchain must execute the smart contract, allowing the token transfer. To sum up, smart contracts provide a more reactive data-driven, event-driven, distributed organization than the traditional control flow organization of IT systems. We can say, for example, that such a blockchain 2.0 has been managed, for example, by AXA to pay for delayed flight. Blockchain 1.0 and 2.0 have provided technological support for public usage. However, sharing blocks in a public infrastructure may be risky for enterprises. Permission blockchains provide private and isolated distributed support for company or consortium, but they require first to know precisely who can accede to the blockchain and there is no solution to manage inter-blockchain exchanges. Moreover, scaling remains a challenge for these technologies. To overcome these limits, Blockchain 3.0 aims at providing blockchain middleware, providing interoperability and scalability while deploying distributed applications. This leads to make blockchain evolve from a technological application to a distributed as a service organization, embedding blockchain technology and maybe extra usage based services towards more traditional everything as a service vision. Lastly, Blockchain 4.0 aims at embedding the blockchain technology in a more business-friendly organization. Whereas Blockchain 2.0 and 3.0 require development and technological knowledge, Blockchain 4.0 aims at empowering users with a simpler development process. It provides extra functions based on the Blockchain 3.0 stack, such as access control or payment management. It also addresses the blockchain efficiency limits to support large-scale deployment. So what will be the future of blockchain technology? It may also evolve to blockchain 5.0 and so on, just to define new way to identify the way this technology will be used and how it will be uh, implemented. So, based on this short review of blockchain characteristics, we can identify a set of governance and regulation challenges. First of all, all blockchains are designed as distributed organizations, integrating different kinds of actors, developers, transaction validators, users, and so on. This means that governance rules must be set and accepted by all parties to define the validation strategies, the way transaction validators are paid, as well as access control mechanism to join the distributed application and the distributed organization. Focusing on the main functionality of the blockchain, managing a distributed ledger, storing immutable and trusted transactions, it can be used by applications for various areas. This leads to integrate regulation challenges related to the anonymity of users, the token status, and so on. This point will be discussed in the further sections. So, after identifying the core blockchain Key concepts and key characteristics, let's now first identify the way such distributed organizations are governed. It is the way decisions are taken. As tokens are often used to pay miners and core developers, we also focus on the token status to identify whether which governance or legal regulation are set to regulate this token's usage. As said previously, blockchain is a distributed trust system with multiple stakeholders. The initial blockchain 1.0 has been set as an open system, which can be joined freely by transaction validators. The key governance question for such an organization is, can we ensure that the distributed ledger is safe, immutable and consistent? In fact, trust is necessary to validate the transaction and ensure that each copy of the distributed ledger stores the immutable and validated transactions. This involves that all stakeholders must accept and share a common decision rule to define how a block can be validated and inserted in the ledger. In this distributed ledger context, there's no central authority certifying validators. 
Trust building refers to the Byzantine general's problem. The challenge consists in getting a consensus to prove the validity of the distributed ledger, even if some of its copies are modified by fellow agents. Such governance rules are designed to be safe, provided that there are no secret validators organization aiming at providing a consensus on false block validation. In such case, all miners involved in the felon organization declare that the false copy is the right one, and if there are majority, all other validators must accept it. Such a felon behavior lead to attack transactions integrity, leading to steal crypto assets associated to these transactions. To manage this route ledger consistency, different consensus management strategies are used. The key point consists in determining the right trusted value from information stored in the different ledgers. Basically, the problem has been addressed thanks to Byzantine fault tolerant algorithms such as Raft or Paxos. These algorithms can identify the trusted ledger value if 51% of the nodes are not lying. This is a quite strong constraint. Other new approaches, such as gossip-based consensus, are introduced, I mean, as graph distributed ledgers. In this last case, each network member adds a new comment and sends a block to the next node that may be chosen randomly. Let's now come back to the traditional blockchain technology. Paying attention to the protocols to validate the transaction, inserting it in a block linked to previous ones, different blockchain governance rules can be used. Proof of Works is the first protocol introduced in the blockchain. 1.0. It involves complex mathematical problem solving. The key idea is that an often important investment is required to get the transaction validated. This work involvement of the blockchain miner is associated to the trust level it can add. On one end, it is also rather hard to generate the validation information so that the transaction integrity is increased. It's too expensive to be hacked, in fact. But on the other hand, important pools of computing resources and energy are required to support the blockchain. Therefore, miners who are paid using blockchain certified cryptocurrency have to sell this cryptocurrency to get legal currencies to buy these computing resources and energy. Consequently, this increases the speculative character of these cryptocurrencies. A second approach is a proof of stack. Proof of stack avoids AV computations. In this case, validators are randomly chosen according to the amount of currency they invest for the transaction. To avoid centralized validation architecture, I mean a system where always the same owner of the currency can validate transactions, Regulating mechanisms are set, for example, requiring a minimum of time storage for the currencies, integrating past successful validations, and so on. This means that more a validator invests, higher is the probability to validate blocks and get money for this. As there is a reduced computing cost, there is less need to speculate and have an inflationist cryptocurrency system. As proof of tax, blockchain uses proofs of cryptocurrency owning instead of computing resources to validate new blocks, instead of investing computing time. Therefore, in this context, the at least 51% trusted nodes check means that the attacker needs to possess at least 51% of the cryptocurrency. A last consensus method is a proof of authority. In such case, a small number of well-identified players who do not naturally wish to cooperate but benefit from doing so are operating as validators. Trust is built according to what validators have to lose in the event of malicious acts. This is a rather centralized organization as banks, for example, validators are chosen depending on their reputation. When a, validators, when a validator validates a block, the other must vote to accept it. This means that the validator has to proceed with the job fairly 
otherwise it will not be approved anymore. Using such a validation strategy involves that validators are elected by others on a fair basis. I mean, a validator cannot validate two consecutive blocks, for example. The main limit of this strategy is that the validation power is owned by a reduced set of validators. The main advantage is that blocks are validated qu quickly and at almost no cost. And you can find on YouTube different videos explaining how these different consensus methods of, are used and how it works. Uh, you can refer for that to the reference at the end of this lecture. Other governance rules can be identified based on the blockchain characteristics. As mentioned in the first part of this lecture, there are permissionless and permission blockchains. For permissionless blockchain, no access controls are required. Users can participate depending on the blockchain potential market. This means that the initial actors must agree to set a convenient community development strategy. Regarding permission blockchains, extra rules regarding access controls must be defined. Basically, either participants are fixed from the initial system definition or a dedicated cooptation mechanism must be set to grant access to the private blockchain. This authorization rule must be set initially and ought to be immutable. As the blockchain provides a transaction validation service, its operations entails costs, and it is important to clearly define rules for sharing them. Regarding hybrid blockchain, which are often community-based permission blockchains, there are a set, sets of rules to define public and private services from the blockchain and which user can invoke which service. Cryptographic tokens are the core digital assets managed by a blockchain. A token belongs to a blockchain address which provides a pseudo-anonymity for the owner. Each owner has its own private cryptographic key stored in a wallet. This cryptographic key is used to sign a token before sending it to another person. This authenticates the transaction from the to first token owner side. By this way, the token ownership is transferred. Tokens can be exchanged without any duplication. Tokens can be associated to access rights, to set of rule coded in a smart contract, or to a payment mill. They can be granted to validators as a reward for the block validation. In such case, the token can represent blocks validation fees. This involves that dedicated governance and regulation rules are associated to tokens. Let's now consider the token legal status. Tokens introduced in blockchain may have different kinds of value. A token can be related to a usage it allows, it can be a payment mean, or it can be an investment. But how can you define a security, I mean an investment? According to the AWS test, a um, security is a money investment in a common enterprise where investors expect profits without having any impact in the enterprise success. This means that for most of the blockchain, initial investment can be considered as securities, leading to different legal regulation depending on the country. Only utility tokens allow being involved in blockchain governance, it is the blockchain decisions. To sum up, utility tokens can be seen as a tool allowing the owner to use the network. The owner may also take part in the network decision, such as decision governance, ecosystem uh, building, and so on. Security tokens are associated to money investment in a common enterprise in order to get profits. Payment tokens are defined by the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority, called FINMA, as a pure cryptocurrency used to pay for products or services, they can be also involved in fund transfer. Depending on the token status, different regulations may apply or not for the initial coin offer. Token financial value can vary depending on the offer demand rule. We can note that depending on the project utility and on its community size, speculation may occur. After identifying the blockchain key concept, 
impacts and considering the impact of the distributed organization to set governance and regulation rules, let's now focus on the key governance and regulation requirements. Based on the blockchain key concepts and on the way is this distributed organization is managed, we can identify key governance and regulation requirements. First of all, a blockchain provides a safe transaction support system devoted to peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. This technology can appear as a missing transaction processing element and of the Internet start. This means that adapted governance and regulation requirements must be set to support large-scale collaboration. As mentioned in the previous parts, the different block validation strategies lead to various computing times and costs. Large-scale development of the blockchain mechanism require improving the transaction validation efficiency. Another point is to consider the cyber risks. As blockchain provides a distributed trust mechanisms, hacking affecting the core consensus mechanism must be considered. This leads to particular governance and regulation requirements related to the consensus mechanism to the token status. While setting regulation and governance requirements, a particular attention must be paid on the usage context and their particular requirements. From the early Blockchain 1.0 and to the last Blockchain 4.0 developments, blockchain usages have been greatly increased. There are different business areas that make an heavy use of the blockchain technology. Of course, while financial technologies appear as a natural use of the blockchain due to the initial Bitcoin, collaborative network organizations such as distributed manufacturing, supply chain, take also advantage of this distributed transaction management system. As the blockchain can store safely in an immutable way certified data, applications in the agriculture field to support product traceability, to distributed manufacturing, to e-government, to data certification are also increasing. These new developments take advantage of the distributed transaction management to support distributed business transactions thanks to the generalized event-based organization provided by the smart contract. This can also be worthy used to integrate the large data set provide to, provided by IoT systems to develop new control systems and smart systems. Of course, this data or event-driven organization impacts the information systems. The blockchain services provided by the blockchain 2.0 till 4.0, including smart contracts, provide strong support on the internet for open, collaborative and smart organization. This blockchain development involves that dedicated regulations applying to different usage contexts must be taken into account while developing project blockchain governance and regulation. Let's now introduce generic regulation constraints. As an IT technology, blockchain systems must fit regulation requirements regarding data protection, allowing confidentiality and privacy. Basically, blocks and transactions are stored in a blockchain. They can be accessed. So this requirement involves that people using the blockchain must evaluate separately the requested protection level for the data that may be stored in the public ledger. We have to define extra encryption for sensitive information, such as personal data, ES record, key manufacturing processes, and so on, before storing them in blocks. As far as blockchain are concerned, appropriate access control on the ledger must be ensured that, so that no unauthorized people can get access to any protected information. Regarding the blockchain core organizations, parties are defined thanks to their private key with no link to their real identity. This leads to a pseudonymous identification. This anonymity may be opposed to parties' identification requirements depending on the targeted usage. Last but not least, tokens can be considered as securities. This involves that security regulation requirements must also be taken into account when developing an initial coin offer or while using this. These tokens are used as payment means. As a distributed transaction management system, a particular attention must be paid on the way responsibility is managed. First, a blockchain is a distributed organization, so risks must be considered globally. A particular attention must be paid on the way each party involved in a blockchain ecosystem manages security risks 
as one point of failure may affect the global system. Internal risks must also be considered, although consensus methods have been designed to support distributed trust enactment. A group of validators can act the blockchain and off-chain decision rules must be set to identify how to handle such a situation. Second, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction can be seen as an elementary contract between two identified parties. In Blockchain 1.0, such a transaction can be associated to a payment, while smart contracts developed in the Blockchain 2.0 proposes to fix more complex rules. This technological development challenges for defining smart contract status. Are they a simple data-driven automated execution of a predefined transaction or a legal contract implementation? This legal recognition of smart contract depends also on the way parties' identity will be trusted. Lastly, as an open collaborative organization, the core organization of the blockchain provides an efficient integrity and non-repudiation mechanism, as each transaction, including parties' identification, is stored in blocks, and blocks are stored in the different copies of the ledgers. Due to this openness, a particular attention must be paid on the way privacy is managed, as different legal contexts may be applied depending on the location of the blockchain node, I mean on the ledger copy location. So, it's now time to conclude this quick presentation of the blockchain governance and regulation context. To sum up this lecture, Blockchain technology has evolved from the early Blockchain 1.0 popularized by the Bitcoin to the last development turning blockchain technology into an IT component that can be integrated in various application developments. These different technologies rely on the same core principle. A blockchain consists in a chain of trusted blocks stored in a distributed ledger. Each instance of the ledger owns a full copy of all blocks and transactions. We have shown that the blockchain system can be categorized depending on the technology they provide, namely the blockchain version, and on the potential access control on the blockchain system, permissionless versus permission blockchain. The blockchain system depends also on the service it provides, for example, payment or smart contract execution. It can have different targeted usage, and there are also scalability and sustainability requirements on the blockchain system. Setting a blockchain involves that all parties approve the block validation strategy, as this is the way trust is built in a distributed way. This refers to the on-chain basic governance rule. As mentioned previously, off-chain decision rules must also be set to manage the distributed organization, namely the way partners can join or not a blockchain system and how decisions can be managed in case of internal acts of the ledger by felon validators, for example. As an IT technology, blockchain system must also fit legal constraints such as privacy, cyber risk management, other constraints issued from the targeted application field or from the core blockchain principles such as encryption must also be taken into account. As a blockchain is a distributed system, a particular attention must be paid on the location of each stakeholder as regulation context depends on the hosting countries. Another important point of attention regarding regulation is associated to the token status. This can vary from a technical object for a utility token to a security object for cryptocurrencies. In this last case, financial regulation must be considered, and there are very strict financial regulation. So, if you want to get more information, here are a few resources all the online resources I've be, have been tested by the fall 2022. Thank you for joining this lecture one of module two, and let's get in touch using the social media website of the Chase Project.